Hello, and welcome to this episode of the Apogee Accelerator series. This demo is an extension of another accelerated episode that covers the implementation of trend credentials current type using Apogee's built-in OAuth policies. I would highly recommend viewing and trying that out first. Building on top of that sample, we'll be demonstrating how to limit the access of the token generated using OAuth 2.0 scopes. OAuth 2.0 scopes provide a way to limit the amount of access that is granted to an access token. Now let's walk through the flow. The client app requests an access token. To receive an access token, the client posts an API call to Apigee with the values for client ID and client secret obtained from a registered developer app. And along with that, we are also providing the scope as well. In this example, the scope is read. Apigee validates the credentials. If the credentials are valid, Apigee returns an access token back to the client. If not, an error is returned. When Apigee generates an access token, it will assign the read scope to the generated access token. Now, with a valid token, the client tries a GET call to a protected resource. Apigee validates the token and checks the scope and then sends the request to the target resource and then forwards the response back to the client app. Now, with the same access token, the client tries to perform a POST call. Apigee validates the token. Though the token is valid, the read scope is not allowed to perform a POST operation. Hence, Apigee rejects the call and returns a 403 response back to the client. Now, let's deploy the sample and see it in action. In order to run the sample, you will need an Apigee X instance provisioned with access configured for external traffic. As a user, you need permissions to deploy API proxies, create API products, and register developers and applications. To deploy the sample, you also need the command line tools like gcloud, unzip, curl, jq, and npm. If you're using Google Cloud Shell, these are already installed. We've also included a Google Cloud Shell tutorial, which you may simply click to quickly get started. Now that you are in the Cloud Shell environment, you can follow the step-by-step -step instructions on the right-hand side. First, let's ensure we have an active GCP account selected in the Cloud Shell. Now let's next Navigate to the appropriate directory in the Cloud Shell. Finally, let's open the env.sh file and update the environment properties here like the project, Apigee host and Apigee environment. Let's save the file and source the env.sh file. Click Authorize. Now that the prerequisites are complete, let's click Start. Now the first thing we'll have to do is run this script. Now this script will basically deploy the API proxies, two API products, a sample application, along with a sample developer. The script also tests that the deployment and configuration was successfully created and deployed correctly. This may take a few minutes. Now that it's complete, let's look at the console log. It, it clearly mentions all the Apigee artifacts are successfully deployed. This is a proxy URL, a wrap, client ID with the read scope is here, secret with read scope, client ID with write scope, and the secret with write scope as well. So we have two API products and apps created with two different uh, app credentials and appropriate read and write scopes created as part of the script. Now let's first try the read scope token with the credentials that we've received earlier. So let's call this curl command. We've received a success. You will see that you have successfully accessed a resource to secured by 
OAuth2. Now similarly, let's run another command with a post call. You will see that we are getting a 403 response with the error message being required scope as write. Now let's try the same example with the write scope. Now let me copy this curl command and paste it here. It's a successful response. Similarly, let's copy the same command for the post call with the uh, write access token and let's make a post call. That was successful as well. Now with this, we were able to generate two different access tokens with two different scopes, read and write, and make get and post calls to see appropriate access limited depending on the type of tokens being used. Now with this, we are done with our steps. So let's go and click next. Uh, now that we've completed this uh, lab, we can actually uh, go ahead and read this tutorial and also clean up, right? So let's run this command. So this should go back and clean up all the uh, necessary artifacts that we were had created as part of the earlier script. I hope you found this video useful. You can subscribe to our channel to see more videos in the Apogee Accelerator series. If you have questions, please visit the Apogee community. Thanks for watching.